Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one I'm going to be covering custom inspector design so that you can add your own buttons and labels and stuff to script. Um, this is something that's quite easy to get into, though it can be quite expensive. And I guess a lot of people don't know about it. Um, it's, you know, you shouldn't go around using it everywhere, it might be a bit excessive, but there are certain cases where you would want to use it. So I'll just show you like one or two examples of how to use it and how to set it up and then you can obviously find your own uh, uses of it. Uh, I want to start off Donate five dollar donation to Discord. Uh, is able to or would like to help out? Then the links in the description. So video. It's on my old projects, but it doesn't matter. Just two shapes. You know, they don't really have anything in common. Okay, well, no, sorry, they have quite a bit in common. Obviously, they all have a transform and a collider and a whatever. The point is, I put the script on them. Custom inspector example. Okay, now a normal script. So, right, let's just get rid of that, we don't need that nev mesh. Okay, so, um, this is the name of our script, obviously, well, the name of our class, whatever, and we can write functions in here to um, do something, or we can um, write code in a second script which inherits from editor. So actually, I'll make that now, so ignore the other scripts down here. If I just write um, C sharp script called, um, what have I called the other script? I'll just put example editor. Okay, exam poll editor. Okay, so um, with this example editor, what we need to do is we basically need to um, reference our other class so we can get like data from it. Um, but one thing to note uh, is editor scripts, as far as I'm aware, they need to be inside an actual editor folder. Um, I'm not sure if that's true, I've just always done it and I've heard from other people it's true. So I'm actually just going to create a folder called editor. It just seems like the normal best practice thing to do. So we've got an editor folder with the editor script. Now in this editor script, what we need to do is, we've obviously got the script name just like the class name as normal when it lets me go to it. Um, so you've got the example editor, but it's a mono behavior behavior. We want it to be of type editor, so editor. Um, but before we do that, we have to actually be using Unity editor. Okay, and let's type it again. So it derives from editor. Um, and what we do is we want to write here on the attribute at the top, just like you might write for a scriptable object, create asset menu. You want to type custom editor, type of, and then the type of is the um, class that you are writing the extension for. So custom inspector, custom inspector example, which is what I call my script. Okay, so that's the type. And then by default, just like when you inherit from mono behavior, you have void start and void awake and void update. In this you have um, on inspector GUI. Uh, if we write public override void, because this is the way you, um, if you actually see on here, there's a few other ones you can override. If we put um, on inspector GUI, this is basically what gets called when it um, is writing the graphical user interface GUI. Um, so we want to do the base stuff, which is just what it would write anyway. Um, so like for example, right, if we go here and we have um, private, well serialized field private int x, you know, just the normal stuff, um, private string, um, player name and you know to have maybe one more field let's say it was um, you know, private ball uh, is grounded depending on like what kind of game it is what you're doing you've got some variables on your script right um, so if we go to both of these objects now because they both have that script they're obviously both going to have the code um, oh what have I done here okay so first of all it's um, oh it goes fixed now never mind so we've got the uh, x name and grounded boolean string integer. So what do we need to do now or what can we do? Well we can write a function in here to um, keep in mind these are on objects and objects all have transforms for example. So a base UI which just draws the you know normal like these basically so we can edit them and inspect. What we need to do first is for us to do it we need to know which object with the script we've actually got selected. So with this um, editor, we we know we have reference to what we've currently got selected. So like, you know, clicking on things, 
uh, saying if I click on this capsule then it is selected, if you click on this it's selected, if I click on both they're both selected and so on. So um, what I can do is I can write custom inspector example because I made a really long class name just because <laughs> I did. Um, let's just call it example. Okay, Example equals target and target is a variable from the editor class that we're deriving from. Um, but we can't set it equal to target because um, as you see, this is of type object and it needs to be of type custom inspector example. So we need to cast it as that class. So if you cast things, you write the actual what you want it to be before it. Now you can't cast everything as, you know, ev anything else. Only certain things can be cast as other things. Uh, so if we type custom inspector example like that, that works. So we've now stored this variable is the current one that we've clicked on. So the current reference of the script that we got clicked on in the uh, inspector, basically, um, which can be multiple, actually, as far as I'm aware. So what we can do now is we can reference this example, right? So example, now we've got reference to the game object. So we can do things in here with the game object, right? Um, as you do, right? You might want to do stuff like that. We, we can actually just write code in here to do stuff with this um, currently selected thing. So like, if we um, select it, we can then make it change size, change color, move, whatever you want to do. But maybe we want to actually have more control over that. Now, I know um, by default for like scale, transform, position, you have um, norm. You already have the values to change, right? You have the x, y, z. You've got your scale um, as the vector freeze when you click on an object. But we can change that in our own special thing, which obviously you can make buttons do what you want, but I'm not going to go into that. So let's say we want to um, make a slider that we can, you know, slide to change the value, right? Just like you, would have, just like you have a slider in a um, range, like if you make a variable with range, like this, this index, right, you can do um, range 0, 1, um, and then if we went back into the inspector, you'd see that we've got a slider for it. Um, that only lets you go between zero and one, for example. Now, just like that, you can add your own extra ones that aren't for variables. You just do what you want with them. So we can say example dot, um, now if you see this different variables, so, um, <coughs> sorry. Maybe we want to change the I don't know, rotation through a slider or something. I don't know. Um, or the transform or the scale. It works for all. Maybe we want to do all of them. I don't know. But well, let's just say um, we want to change example. Now, I might as well just make this public if I want to reference it. I mean, we could still just do the uh, set. Um, well, let's do it as a set. So I'll write uh, public uh, void set x value. I don't know. Set x value. I could just do the property thing like I showed last video, but I'm just going to do this. Um, and it'll take in a float. Let's say float. Um, it's going to take in a float called value. And we're just going to say x equals value. Okay. Um, so if we go in here now, we can say dot set x value equal to editor um, GUI layout dot and then boom. We've got all of these things. Now, as you see, these are these are all things you can just add onto the inspector, which are already on all of the scripts you see. Um, I don't even know. I've not used half of them, obviously, but like you've got um, enum pop up, you've got again help box, mask field, knob, int slider, separator. I mean, you could just go through and test them and see what they all do. Maybe there's good documentation. I'm not sure, but the point is, you've got so many different things you can uh, do with this. So let's just say we want a slider, which is obviously there. Make a slider, you can drag change the value between min and max. So we'll pass in um, the value we want to change. So we want to change um, example dot set x value. Um, oh, that's a function, sorry. Um, function and then What's that? Uh, oh, does this not return a float? Oh, it does return a float, but... Ah, okay. For some reason... Oh, I get it. I've, I've messed up. Um, public void get x value return x. Um, t 
uh, I've made this like longer than it has to be. But anyway, example uh, dot get x value, and then it wants the left value, which is the minimum. So if we're going to do scale, maybe um, well, we, don't, we don't want it to be zero. Let's say um, point zero one f. Just keep it small, but not like zero. Um, I mean, you probably don't want to go. Let's let's just say point five. And then we want to go to a maximum. So we'll say um, maybe the max size is 10f. And then once we've got this, oh, what's going on here? Uh, can I, ah, public uh, float. There we go. Okay. And is there an extra bracket missed? So now that we've done that, we can then actually, you know, do something with that value. So we can say uh, example dot transform dot scale. So it'll be local scale uh, is equal to, and then we want to multiply this value. Now, obviously, a scale is an x, y, and a z, and we want to actually um, set an x, y, and a z. So I could just write three separate things saying set the x to that, set the y to that, set the z to that. But one way you can do it is you can have a vector and multiply it by that value. So uh, if you want to change all scales, right? So we can say uh, vector three dot, and then we'd want one so you could write a new vector free um one 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 but i think it already exists vector free dot one is that a thing yeah shorthand for writing vector free one 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 so it's just a, a simple way to do it times by and then we want to say example dot get x value now if i've done that all right what we should see when we go in the inspector is we should have our own slider and if I select this and then slide this, we actually can scale it for our own slider. Uh, and I also, yeah, I made X be the actual value. Um, now, as you see, I can actually set it here manually higher than X lets you, which is a bit odd. Uh, obviously, yeah, it lets you do that because the, the setting the X range doesn't actually clamp the value. It just means it clamps the value in the inspector. But the point is we can still change this. Now, if I change this up and then click on here, it's got its own independent value, right? But um, the point is I can change these things just here, scaling it in every axis. Um, like rather than, like the, basically scaling in every axis is actually useful because I mean, obviously yeah, you can press R and do it. So yeah, the point is also, yeah, if you do this, it overrides because it happens every frame when it's updating the UI. As soon as you like let go or stop moving it and it updates, it's going to return it back to its position. So. In reality, that isn't a useful example, but it's an example nonetheless. And the point is you can do anything with that. Um, I'll show one other example is that you can change uh, colors in the inspector. So let's say, for example, um, on our inspected GUI, we've got our reference here. Um, <coughs> sorry, and we can make a button instead of a slider. So let's just say um, example. Well, first of all, we'll just have a button, right? Now, to make a button, you actually have to put it in an if. So, um, and then once it's inside the if, it obviously calls the if and returns true if the button is pressed. So, GUI layout dot button. And then the button takes in, um, there are obviously different parameters you can pass in. Um, we can just pass in a, like, just a string, to be honest. You can just pass in a string, and that's fine. Uh, now, the string we can have for the button can be. Um, what should we do? Should we do like, should we do color? Because there's nothing else in here that's worth changing that you can't just change easily. At least the color's kind of like, oh yeah, here's our button, but it doesn't call anything. So um, just make the button. Uh, what 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 should we do with the with the thing? We could transform dot. Maybe we'll just say destroy, and then we can just say. Um, destroy example dot game object so I don't know why you'd want this and I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll work in the inspector we'll see if it works so now that we've got this destroy if I just click on like this thing and press destroy no nah, it doesn't you can't um, do it from edit mode oh oh there is a, there's a destroy immediate um, strongly recommended not to do this well, I'm going to do it for the sake of... Oh, I don't need to press play as well, do I? Also, yeah, if I press that destroy button in play mode, it probably work. But the point is, yeah, like, you can actually just press this destroy button to destroy them. Now, I don't want to press this one to get rid of it, so we'll just not press that. But you get the point. I'm purposely not clicking in it. Um, 
So you can do whatever you want through here. You can add your own buttons to do cool things. Um, I don't know, probably a bit dangerous having that button. That's probably why he doesn't recommend it. Um, but yeah, you can just basically go through and just test things out. So you can say like uh, GUI layout dot, you know, what do you want? Maybe you want to test a uh, password field, um, which, I don't know why it wants a string for power. I've not used this one before, so. Um, that's probably optional. What's wrong here? Cannot convert string to char. Oh, for string, yeah. For char, you have to use those. Okay, so if I just put test, um, let's see what happens. So it redraws the GUI when it's compiled. And now we have, oh, so it, it has one by default. Okay, so you can actually just leave that blank if you wanted it to be an actual password input. Now, I don't know why you'd want a password input on your thing. There's probably some reason why you might want it in your inspector. The point is you can now type things in here. Oh no, apparently you can't. Um, where the user can enter a thing. Prompts UI layout options. To be honest, I can't be bothered going into that and learning like what does what. Um, but yeah, I highly encourage you to basically go and mess around with this, see what you can do. Um, box GUI content. See, a lot of the things actually take in um, things. So if I was to put like, hello, uh, GUI style. I mean, I don't have like a GUI style thing to test, to be honest. Um, but I can make a box hello. I don't know what that'll do. Maybe it'll make a box of hello in the middle or, yep, just a little box of hello. But the point is you can basically design your inspector however you want, uh, it's up to you. So you might be able to write functions that you want to use buttons from here that do special things. So uh, there's not much more else to the video. Uh, if you did like this video, then obviously leave a like and subscribe, it would mean a lot. Uh, if you haven't already, obviously. Uh, if you haven't joined our Discord server already, then I highly recommend that, but it's up to you. Um, leave your video suggestions in the comments below so I can get around to what people want to see. Uh, just please, that's why I encourage the most pe people. I really want people to leave suggestions of what they want to see. But um, you know, it's up to you. So if you have done everything and I've done everything, I've covered everything. So thanks for watching and goodbye.